Welcome to Las Vegas for another episode of UFC All Access. Hi everyone, I'm Rochelle Leah. He may come across laid back with his happy, go lucky attitude, quick wit, and deadpan humor, but he is one of the most intense athletes in this sport. He's dedicated, focused, and delivers some of the most exciting fights in the octagon. It's all because of his work ethic and the fact that nothing else really matters to him. He is a fighter through and through. In fact, he's getting ready to work out. Let's go meet him. Hi, Forrest. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for giving us all access. Glad to have you. This is light heavyweight Forrest Griffin, and this is UFC All Access. One of the most popular fighters ever to set foot in the octagon, Forrest Griffin helped put mixed martial arts on the mainstream map with his unforgettable win over Stefan Bonner in the Ultimate Fighter Season 1 finale. Since then, Griffin has proven himself to be more than just a one-hit wonder, and his battles with some of the best fighters in the UFC have shown that he is a serious athlete who belongs with the best at 205 pounds. At UFC 76 on September 22nd, Griffin will face former Pride star Mauricio Shogun Hua, where he will be tested like never before. Every day for the eight weeks before a fight, I try and wear the pressure of the fight that day. Have I done everything I can possibly do mentally and physically yes. to win? Oh, hey. Right now, Force is working on his Thai boxing here at the training center. He told me he works out minimum 12 times a week. Most weeks, he works out even more than that. Training should be harder than fighting. Today we did five five-minute rounds, and I try to cut it down to about 30 seconds rest. So if he's used to catching his breath in 30 seconds, that extra 30 seconds, he's going to be really ready for the next round. There's some people who come in with crazy talent. They just learn things like that. Some people have to work hard. Forrest works extra hard to, to surpass everyone. That's just, that's him. That's Forrest. Now he's moving, he's thinking, he's fighting smart. More than fighting crazy hard, but he's still got that crazy in him, which people like. Gil Martinez is a world-renowned boxing coach. You know, he's worked with some really, really great boxers. Why he's working with me, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm throwing good punches. Keep my feet where I need to be. We do 10 rounds on the mids. I try and simulate the fight. That means uh, I'm throwing punches as, as he's throwing punches. I need a lot of work on everything, you know. I accept that. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Hard and determination you can't teach, but you need to teach the technique. As soon as we're done with that, we do his uh, stomach workout. Across, across. Yay. The other way too. The tire is an old tie thing. You jump on a tire for five minutes, I mean, your calves will burn. There's what you call a bread basket, and he hits me in that every time, right where the oven really gets knocked out at you. I'll make you breathe right, make you still move in your fight stance. You know, I'm just strengthening his abs so he gets used to getting hit. My favorite part of training. I get to hit Forrest, he doesn't get to hit me back. Fresh Forrest. Okay, one workout down, three to go. Forrest rushed off to the second of his three gyms. You know, I go to three different gyms just, you know, to get kind of what I need. And for me, it kind of keeps it fresh. The more input you get, the better. I try and learn a lot of things, and then four times a week, I go over to Randy's and try to put it into practice. Well, Randy's going back to a little kickboxing spot. Do that to see at least there's something coming in my face. 
kind of kill the flinch reaction. Just get used to getting hit a little bit. People understand work as something that can't be compromised. You have to go to work or you get fired. Well, I have to go to work or I'll get beaten to a bloody pulp. It's not playtime. This is my job. When I'm at work, don't bother me. Horace is a hard worker, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he trains hard and he, uh, non-stop. After, after a hard training session, he still wants to go more. You don't spar with Flores, you fight. Now that's a good time, you know? If you guys don't back down, it's usually a pretty good fight. Forrest's intensity is legendary in the gym. He's going to go five hard rounds until he has nothing left. All right, that was kickboxing. Now we're going to go do some jiu-jitsu. Don't go anywhere. When UFC All Access returns, we go grappling and then finish the day off with a non-stop strength and conditioning workout. This is where Forrest trains jiu-jitsu. Now, Forrest is known for an exciting stand-up game. People easily forget how good he is on the ground. In fact, his record is 14-4, and four, six of which are wins by submission. Forrest has tremendous jiu-jitsu skill. He uh, can hang with anybody on the ground. I think he prefers to stand up. He prefers to bang with people, but he's top-notch as far as jiu-jitsu goes. We do 10 minute rounds. We usually get Forrest going five to eight 10 minute rounds, depending how many people are there um, that day that are good sparring partners for Forrest that can really challenge him. That's one thing I had to work on is not making horrid facial expressions during the fight. Motivates the other fellow. <laughs> It's hard, but I managed to make it look harder somehow. I don't know. All right, we headed back to where our day began for Forrest's most grueling workout yet. Forrest is going to do an intense strength and conditioning session. He's going to be working on muscular endurance and cardio conditioning. You've got to see this. He needs his intensity to be hit extremely high in every different aspect of his training. When he gets to me, he's at his most tired. I do this workout last and always last because I suck at all my other training. What are you trying to be? Good at running and good at fighting. I'm trying to be good at fighting. What I do is incorporate different movements and different exercises that involve his entire body. Some MMA movements like the wall get-ups, but pretty much everything just to get his heart rate up. We have to get his heart rate up close to about 170. Then in his rest period, it drops as low as 143. His cardio conditioning is going to be off the hook. I push him so hard and so intensely that all I want to do is break force. I want to make him just grind and work hard to where he just wants to quit. I can't get Forrest to quit. He just drives and drives and drives like nobody I've ever seen. Last one, last one, last one. This is that shit come back. So I do actually love to lift weights, and sometimes I have to tell myself, you know, you're, you're not a weightlifter. <laughs> I found that out the hard way many times. You know, you come into training, I'll beat up, and I'm like, well, what'd you do? Who'd you work out with? I was like, oh, just lifted weights. So every day before I go to lift, I say, you know, I'm lifting to be a better fighter. I'm not lifting so I can lift more weights. <laughs> Four 
When we come back, the conditioning continues as Forrest does some hardcore running. That's up next here on UFC All Access. Singularity of purpose is really why I moved out here, just to have a primary focus in your life. I made some great strides when I started. I was sleeping on my coach Roy Singer's floor in Georgia. I moved out here, I did the show. Forrest Griffin, you are the ultimate fighter. I slept in Alex Schoenhauer's dining room for about a year. It's kind of like camping out every day. After really three years of not having my name on the lease, not having a bill in my name, bought a house and I got every bill in the world in my name. Uh, so yeah, I just moved in, got a couch, I got a cable. What I don't have is a TV. I can live without it, you know? It's not a primary concern. That's the definition of singularity of purpose. Even though this was technically Forest Day Off, I'm not sure the guy ever really rests. He met up with his boxing coach Gil at the Silverado High School football field for a gauntlet of running drills. We have a uh, tire that uh, he's going to drag. We're going to do two on the tire, two on the sled, up and down the field, 120 yards each way. I have no idea how much weight's on the sled. It's uh, 105 pounds. Or how much the tire weighs. Uh, 72 pounds. Because it's easier that way. Either it'd be an infinitesimal amount, and I'd feel like a real wuss, or it'd be so heavy that it would be intimidating, and I wouldn't be like, I can't drag that. Push yourself! The legs burn a lot of oxygen. It's that oxygen deprivation feeling, like in a fight. We're scrambling, shit, you know. Between each pull on the either the sled or the tire, he does one lap around the track, and has no break between them. The only break he has is when we are putting the harness on and putting the harness off. Go for it! Last one, baby. Let's go. Make it a good one. Every run's a little different. Today was easy as far as the drags, but then we uh, we ran the bleachers for time. See, I didn't know he was going to time me on the first lap and then hold me to that time for the last five laps. He'll make you do different jumps and hops up the bleachers depending on what he wants, you know? Just different ways to torture me. It really is so hot out there on the track and on the uh, bleachers that your feet get hot, like they're burning. It's the Vegas sun, babe. It's 100 degrees. And uh, we usually run at 11, so peak hour for the sun. Heat's intensity. Intensity's only going to make you stronger. Oh, nice relaxing morning. Had some coffee. A little sprint work. Pass out and die. The usual. Okay, it was finally time for Forrest to enjoy his day off. And what better way to cool off than skydiving? Hello. What suits? Thank you. It's basically a giant fan that pushes you in the air. And uh, if you're Rochelle and you weigh like 100 pounds, ooh, giant fan pushes you way in the air. If you're me and you're a brick, giant fan almost pushes you until guide guy has to actually grab you and lift you up. I actually felt like a gymnast, you know, but like the chick maybe in an ice skating show, you know, like he was picking me up and doing stuff with me and holding me in positions. It's pretty unmanly, but yet fun at the same time. Thanks again, man, that was great. Seriously, hey, no thank problem. you so much. No problem, Appreciate take the gear out this way, I'll show you what to do with it. Don't go anywhere when we come back. More with Forrest Griffin on UFC All Access. Turns out for Forrest, happiness is a warm gun. We go shooting when UFC All Access returns. All right, shoot some guns. I've always liked guns. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be G.I. Joe. I don't know, but that was awesome. Oh. 
I like to drive fast and shoot guns. It's just how I party, man. All right, so if all that doesn't work... That well. Obviously, Forrest knows how to shoot, so I thought I'd test his skills with a live target. I've gotten to play paintball quite a few times in the past, but uh, if you know people, like apparently I do know people in the UFC, you can play paintball in abandoned houses, which is super cool. It's okay that mine's going to be brand new because it'll still be brand new. When I turn it in, you're just going to be covered in paint. Oh, yeah? Do you have a, uh, a bigger gun that I can use, too? There we go. There go. That should be sufficient. I think my I'm testosterone level just went up a little bit. Oh, God. This is the moment of truth. We are officially no longer friends right now. Oh, it's official. Yeah. Let's get to it. You are so going down. Come on. Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Don't ever be merciful to girls. They will not be merciful to you. I found that out the hard way. Over the past two days, Forrest sacrificed his time, some of his training, and even his body in giving us all access. Forrest has a dream, and that's to be a UFC champion. And he has a plan. He believes there are no training secrets, and the road to his success lies in dedication and hard work. Most of the secrets I've got as far as how I train and what I do, I stole them. I got to work out with Chuck. I got to work out with Randy. I've gotten to work out with a lot of great fighters, you know? There's nothing really new under the sun. That's the old saying. Everything I do is stolen, so what am I going to do if they steal it back? There are just times, you know, when you want something and you think you kind of almost have earned it. Or you want this enough to, to give whatever. Working out serious, you know. I put a lot of pressure on myself to succeed and to do well and to make improvements every day. If I didn't have the stress that somebody kicking my head in on September 22nd, I probably wouldn't go to the gym in the morning. You know, I can sleep in today. Oh, wait, some guy's gonna kick me as hard as he can. Hmm. I better go to the gym. And he's always cracking jokes, so people don't take him quite as serious. But those who have been around him for a while know that, one, he's, he's highly intelligent, and he has a plan. He has a plan in, in the UFC and what he wants to get done. This is something I plan on doing for another seven years. I got a master plan in everything. Uh, this is something I love. I'm still young enough. I'm still getting better at it. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. All right, I'm going to let you get to bed. So thanks for giving us all access. I'm Rochelle Leah. Boris Griffin, you've been watching UFC All Access. We'll see you next time.